Currents by Tame Impala is a landmark album and certainly one of the best to come out of 2015, but when you understand that it was made by one guy, Kevin Parker, it suddenly becomes that much more impressive. Today on the program, we're gonna dive into what it took to make Currents. Like I said at the top, Kevin Parker wrote, produced, performed, recorded, and mixed this record in his home studio near Perth, Australia. It's believed that recording began sometime in the first quarter of 2014, and Fleetwood Mac was an early inspiration for the new album. He loved their clean pop approach to songwriting and took it as a challenge to himself to not fill his music with layers and layers of sound, but instead let the music breathe. And this pop inspiration turned into a revelation. Growing up, Parker felt he couldn't listen to R&B and pop music without his friends thinking he was lame, even though secretly he really liked that music, especially 90s R&B, so it became a guilty pleasure for him. And for a long time, he was under the impression that pop artists were fake and only in it for the money, and only rock bands were playing for the truth. But as Tame Impala gained popularity, Parker started to notice that quite the opposite can also be true. While on the road he met with pop artists that were incredibly kind and down to earth whereas some of the rock bands he played with could just be rude. Parker recalls an epiphany while being driven through the streets of Los Angeles high on mushrooms and probably a little coked out too. The Bee Gees' Staying Alive came on the stereo, a song he had heard many times in his youth, but suddenly the song took on an emotional and melancholy nature. He was deeply moved in a way that only psych music had affected him in the past. In this moment, he realized just how psychedelic pop music can be. And his perspective continued to expand with his 2014 collaboration with producer Mark Ronson. He recorded three songs for Ronson's 2015 album, Uptown Special, and the experience was eye-opening. Parker found himself in a professional recording studio, which was a rarity for him at this time, and he was surrounded by experienced session players such as the Dap Kings and others. He began to realize just how hard it is to write pop music and gained much more respect for the genre that he wrote off in his youth. For Parker, psychedelia is all about opening your mind, but at the same time, he feels you shouldn't shut everything else out, and this gave him the permission he needed to embrace pop music for this record. Confident in his new direction, the lyrical concept for the record was largely inspired by his recent breakup with French singer Melody Prochet. The two met in Paris around 2011 after a Tame Impala show and immediately hit it off. Kevin went on to produce her 2012 self-titled album Melody's Echo Chamber. By 2014, they had drifted apart and Parker left Paris to return home in Australia. He soon became obsessed with recording, working every day in isolation, starting around noon and going late into the evening, all while smoking and enjoying a few drinks, which helped him to get into his flow. And when he did have writer's block, he took breaks by jumping into the ocean that was right outside his door. Though I should make it clear that Parker doesn't solely rely on drugs for his creativity, as he has come up with some great ideas while sober. But the one thing he can never escape is his perfectionism, crafting his songs down to the smallest detail. In fact, one song had over 1,000 partial vocal takes. Regardless, this delayed the album's release. Initially, it was supposed to come out in early 2015, but it was pushed back to May before finally releasing on July 17th. For Parker, the deadline was both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it helped his process by forcing him to make creative decisions there and then rather than later. But on the other hand, this caused him to have nervous breakdowns during the recording process, with him feeling frozen, unsure how he was going to finish the record on time. Needless to say, this album marked a change in Tame Impala's sound. Parker's first two records were much more based in rock and late 60s psychedelia, whereas this record has 80s synths, over 70s style drums, with traces of 90s R&B sprinkled throughout. It's as much a product of his newfound embrace of pop music as it was born out of necessity. You see, Parker started writing many of these songs in the years leading up to recording, often while on the road using a simple audio recorder to jot down ideas. And when he did get breaks from touring, he often didn't have access to his gear as it was being shipped to the next location of the tour, forcing him to write more on his home synthesizers. While guitars are present on all the tracks, they take a backseat for most of this record. When it came to the artwork for 
for the album, Kevin visualized the music and he remembered seeing diagrams of vortex shedding, basically how air or liquid flows around solid objects. He then entrusted artist and musician Robert Beatty to turn these ideas into the album artwork we see now. The name for the record came from the abandoned Kuji power station. He found inspiration and creative energy from its monolithic stillness. During recording, he would often visit the site to write lyrics or just be next to it. Even though he thought of the title Currents early on in the recording process, it wasn't until he made the connection that the power station is where electricity comes from that he feel confident in the name. In the end, his hard work paid off in spades. Tame and Paula transformed from indie rock darlings into a full-fledged headlining act. Currents debuted in the top 10 for the first time in both the UK and the US, and it enjoyed a healthy position on many best of 2015 lists. For Parker himself, he won both engineer and producer of the year awards at the Arias, and the record was nominated for best alternative album at the 2015 Grammys, losing to Sound and Color by Alabama Shakes. I myself considered a modern classic and a must own for any vinyl collector. Well, that'll do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I am your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching this making of video. Now be sure to check out my review of the album, and while you're at it, don't forget to watch my custom cocktail I created for the album Currents. It's a refreshing drink using black currant liqueur. I think you guys are really gonna dig it.